This is BBC Radio Guernsey, JKT, with you until one o'clock. At the moment, I'm in the studio with photographer Liz Kerr. She's much, much more than a photographer, though. She's a writer. She's a mum to Noah, aged 18 months. Hello, Noah. You're right there. Hello. (laughs) He's gone shy on me again. Um, Liz, what are your thoughts about the resistance in certain quarters to gay marriage? I think uh, there's been a fair bit in the press in the last couple of weeks just about the subject, um, especially because this this UK-based coalition of marriage has been, um, I suppose, advertising more than anything else. Um, And I think... The re- I'm not really concerned about it and honestly I haven't really read it very much and the main reason is because the support for, for gay marriage has been so um, unequivocal across most quarters of, of Guernsey and I just think that you know the tide's turned and I think that hopefully um, if the politicians see reason that it'll be something that'll be passed and you know and it will be an issue no more well in some people's eyes. And tell us about your circumstances. Uh, so I'm with uh, my part. I've been with my partner for 14 years um, and we obviously we're together for quite a while before we decided to have kids and it was not a decision that we took lightly i'm um, raised catholic so i'm very aware of you know the religious aspect of and your partner is um well unofficially church of england um but non-practice your partner is a she oh sorry she's a she yeah 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 she's a she who's also church of england um yeah so um yeah so we decided that uh, that you know it was something that we did want to do and um yeah and took the steps to do that and we've ended up with noah are you married no, no. We were thinking about doing it in the UK um, and it's something that because it wasn't going to be recognised in Guernsey, uh, we actually decided that there was no point doing it until it was recognised where we actually live. How do you feel when you read some of the, the religious stuff in, in letters to the local newspaper? Yeah, honestly, I don't read it. Um, if I, because if there's an article in the, you know, in the press and, and people write comments and people, it's so easy these days to actually write write comments and hide behind them and especially to do it anonymously. And I just think that... What I, the thing that I've been more surprised and impressed about has been the amount of positivity, um, you know, recently, and how many people are just so supportive, and and I just I I prefer to focus on that rather than you know the few people who probably shout the loudest, but who also it affects the least. It's not just people hiding behind letters, though. It's the the printing of adverts, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, and the the press have come out and said that it's um it's freedom of speech and it is. Um, you know, uh, the fact that people are willing to pay to to advertise, you know, and I suppose something that apparently means a lot to them, even though it's not an island that they live in, is I suppose it's their choice at the end of the day. Now you are a beautiful, intelligent, um, proactive, go-getting mum. What would you say to those people who say your child should not be raised? Close your ears now. With, with two <laughs> mummies, I would actually throw back in their face the words that my great aunt, who's a nun. Um, said when basically when she found out and her words were I'm I'm here to love not to judge and I think if a hundred year old nun can say that then everyone else should really take heed. How did you tell her? I was going to tell her in a letter she can't hear very well over the phone um, so I was going to tell her in a letter and then after I had no because I, I couldn't very well go to Australia because she's in Australia uh, with a baby and <laughs> keep it from her. So I'd made the decision to tell her and unfortunately I got sick, quite sick after I had him and I was in hospital. Um, and my aunt, who was the mother superior of the nuns as well at the time, um, she was really worried about me and she actually took it upon herself to tell her because she was worried that, you know, something would happen to me and she would never know. So she actually told her and... Um, as it, as it happened, I'd posted a letter to her, so they kind of crossed. Um, and she just said, you know, I love you no matter what. And that's the most important thing to me. And she said, you'd be blind Freddie, not to know. <laughs> Abs and I had been together for so long. So she is not, she's not a stupid woman. She is really with it. And... But isn't that the point? You were both yeah. brought up within a religious background. Isn't that the point, yeah. to have a Christian attitude? Well, whether think... you're Christian or not, to, to uphold that yeah. sense of, of that moral code where you do unto others what you would have done yeah. unto yourself, isn't that? The point. Absolutely, and I think um, the issue really is that, that both my aunts and nuns are just the most amazing people, and in fact, one of them has a, a PhD. Um, you know, she's a fantastic woman, and I think ultimately the idea of religion is that you are supposed to embrace everybody and you're supposed to respect everyone and love everyone, and not everyone does, and people sometimes do things in, in the name of religion that is not um, does not uphold, I suppose, the very idea of, of the fabric of what religion is really about. And at the end of the day, what I've asked the deputies is, you know, don't necessarily do what you think is best, do what 
what the the majority of the public have said that that they want. And ultimately, if if the politicians represent the public, which is what they're supposed to do, then it should be passed. You are also typical of many of my gay friends who um, have a relationship that's full of more integrity than many of my straight friends. And you and your partner have been together for 14 blissful years. Yeah. Yeah. The last one's been a bit more difficult with the child. <laughs> uh, but more yeah, challenging. yeah, challenging. Um, 14 years, you know, and um, our, our friends, gay and straight, say we, we hold you, you and your relationship up um, because that's kind of the relationship that we aspire to, which is fantastic. And, and to our friends, it's completely irrelevant. Yeah. You know, the fact that we're two women and no, none of them have had a, pr- a problem with us having a kid and they're just like, you know, he's just a, a bundle of energy. Right. And some people are like, oh, well, he's going to end up really girly because he has two mums and he is probably the most boy boy that you would actually see. So um, he has male role models and we're, you know, we're aware of that. And it's kind of no different to, uh, well, I suppose it is different, but to, to a single mum bringing, bringing up a kid, you know, the fact that they have two, two par- parents is... Um, is in my eyes the most important thing. Two strong parents, and he's been brought up within an incredibly loving background. Yeah, absolutely. Is, he has, again, and he has extended about. family, and he's got you know friends as well. So, yeah, it's not like he's isolated with our perverted lifestyle. <laughs> it's no more perverted or less no. perverted than anyone else's. No, it's not absolutely. Not. When, did, when did you realise you were gay? Um, I think uh, probably late teens. Um, it was. I mean, I didn't get with um, with my partner till I was twenty seven. So. Uh, it took me a while. I was a bit of, uh, the Catholic thing kind of got in the way for a while, um, and then when I came over here, I, I suppose I realised that I could be anyone I wanted to be, and and that was you know, and then I met her and, and fell in love, and that was the end of it really. Parents, um, her parents are fantastic, absolutely amazingly supportive, and um, my parents took a while, and fully to their credit because they're very very strongly Catholic, um, they are really making an effort, and they absolutely love Noah, and they've said that you know they're really happy that we're together, so they're they're from an era that's been brought up that it's it's wrong so it's just one of those things now that um you know that because it goes against what they've been taught their whole life it's it's a readjustment for them but you're, and, you're actually being more true to yourselves than than yeah. many people absolutely and they appreciate that and because we've been together so long now um you know they're fine absolutely fine with it and, i really admire that actually the fact that you are able to be that True yeah. to yourself and- it's much easier these days than you know say 30 40 years ago I you know it's very difficult so I think the future generations know a generation and going forward um, hopefully it will be much easier for, for kids to do that and ultimately to not you know not, I suppose struggle um, a whole lifetime with trying to hide who you really are because uh, my listeners are a nosy bunch and <laughs> I preempted their question their next question yes I did <laughs> and I asked Liz if it was okay to ask this question and she said yes because we all want to know how yes everyone that's, got, that's the first question uh, everyone got no, the first question everyone says is when, when we said we were pregnant is who's pregnant which one and then the second question was how did you do it yeah uh, we, it's, it's dif- different in Guernsey from what it is in the rest of the UK um the way that the laws work over here, but we ended up getting a, a donor from Spain. Uh, sorry, not Spain, from Denmark. Um, Spain was another choice that we had, and we went over over there for IVF. And yeah, we're lucky that it actually worked. So you chose the donor. How, yep. how do you choose yes. the donor? Um, it's kind of like shopping on Amazon. You say, you know, I'd like <laughs> six foot tall, blonde, blue eyes. <laughs> it's great. All my friends are like, why couldn't we do that when we actually chose a partner? Um, well, I know a few straight people who've done that. Yeah, yeah, single no, mums, absolutely. Um, and it kind of narrows it down a little bit, and then um, and then we had a, a short list of ten. Um, we didn't have you know photos or anything, but we had enough information, and we had our friends round for a donor party and said you know rate it on uh, on their kind of attributes and what they write because everyone writes a private mess a, a personal message about you know why they're donating and uh, wait, like wait a that. minute you had a donor party yes we had a donor party ten people uh, came round we had all the profiles got them out and said right what are your top three and their top three were our top three. Um, strangely and so yeah we ended up um, choosing the one that we we liked the best. It, I was going to say it sounded like the X Factor but then <laughs> yeah. people, people might think I was being trite about a very serious subject and I don't mean to be but there will be some people thinking isn't that a bit flippant? It is a bit flippant I mean I think ultimately we would have chosen who we wanted to choose anyway um, it's a very big decision and um, it's one of those things I suppose that you end up you know with the end result with Noah it's a bit hit and miss knowing what you're going to end up with and ultimately we think well it's half of my genes and then it's both of our bringing him up so hopefully that will have more impact than uh, 
than but anything else. The, the amazing thing is that uh, if I, just just as a little aside here, um, it's it's making my wonderful producer Rob Byrne a little bit broody. I think is here <laughs> because you're you've come into the studio to entertain Noah. Uh, cute. He's very cute. He's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> he likes doing sneezing impressions. Yes. I've got him going. He likes. Yeah, he's got row 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 your boat and happy birthday down pat as well. Oh, thank you. How old is he? <laughs> 19 months. 19 months, yeah. He's, He's quite gorgeous. chatty. I don't know He's where he got chatty. that from. <laughs> and you've got a little surprise for us because you're, you're not just doing it once in your family, are you? No, no, we're going to try again uh, sometime in the future. So Absol, I, I gave birth the first time and Absol gave birth the second time um, with, same, with the same donor. So Noah will have a, a half-sibling. With the sibling. same donor? Yeah, with the same donor, so... Yeah, so he'll have actually some genes in the family. So he'll be, you know, we'll all be somehow related kind of to at least one of us. That's fantastic. Yeah, and then we really will see whose the good genes are because the donor will be the same. So we'll be like, these are your genes, these are bad, these are my genes, these are great. (laughs) Not that I'm competitive. (laughs) So presumably um, the fact that you've made such a commitment means that you envisage you'll be together for life. Yeah, You just don't at the moment need a marriage certificate. No, we had a a ceremony in 2004 and, um, you know, it wasn't legal or anything. We did it in Guernsey. Um, So in our eyes we are. It's just the fact that we don't have that piece of paper more than anything else. And what about the legal ramifications of, of your being together, the two of you? Yeah, um, it's. I suppose the, the biggest implication is really for Noah, um, the fact that I, you know, we can't both adopt him at the moment. So if I, if my other half adopted him, then I would ha- actually have to give up my rights to him, which is, you know, a bit crazy. But saying Say that, that again, I would have to give up my rights as birth mother if she was to adopt him. However, that's yeah. not a thing against same sex as that's actually um, the adoption law from 1960 which talks about if you're unmarried so it's the same if you're a straight couple um, so you know I think that the adoption law is something that's going to have to change anyway just, just talk us through that if you and Abs <clears throat> were to adopt him together yeah so you we couldn't do it so I gave birth to him so obviously I have parental responsibility for him um, if she because we looked into her adopting him as well so we would both have responsibility and she wasn't able to do it unless I gave up my birth rights but that's because we're not married because we haven't got the option to get married. So what we did instead was give, get her through the courts parental responsibility, which is almost the same. Um, a few things like that she uh, he doesn't necessarily have um, automatic inheritance rights and stuff, but nothing that you can't fix um, in By a will. writing a will. Exactly. And did you do that here in Guernsey? Yeah, we did. We did. Um, and it's one of those things because we'd already prepared the will, um, but it's a period of five or six weeks that it takes and... The, the issue is if something happened to me in that time, and in fact I was in hospital and, and potentially with a life-threatening thing, so it might have happened, but um, yeah, thankfully it didn't, so yeah. It's just wonderful. Um, for anyone thinking of doing IVF or having IVF, what's that like? Um, it's painful. Uh, it's it expensive. Really? <laughs> yeah. No, it is. It's more the uh, the extract, extracting the eggs that's not, not particularly pleasant, but... Sorry, I'm just getting kisses here. You're um, being, I just want to explain. Liz is cuddling now and now, and he's just smothering her in kisses. <laughs> Literally. It's just wonderful. You, you develop a new appreciation for baby slobber. Um, but yeah, it's it's painful, but it, ultimately it's the most um, you know most likely highest percentage chance that you're actually going to get pregnant. And we tried a few times, um, you know, without doing it that way. And ultimately, because I was you know approaching forty at the time, um, that that's the way we tried. Oh, is he all right? I've just elbowed him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Parenting at its best. <laughs> and a lot, a lot of your straight friends are they quite jealous as to the way you've done it? Yeah, though? yeah, I think they are. And they said, you know, there are no complications. In a minute, darling. Um, there are no complications with, or oh, I mean, I suppose there are potential complications if we split up, but you know, that's not on the cards. And um, I've known a couple of, of straight friends that are doing it this way, and they just don't have the complication of, you know, partners and ex-partners later. So, yeah, it's a it's a great way, and um, it's not something that we decided lightly. The biggest decision that we made was whether or not we were going to have a donor that Noah could um, contact later, uh, and we chose not to. And the reason, and it's a controversial decision honestly um you know people decide everything you know either way um but our reasoning for doing it was that if we were a straight couple and one of us weren't able to have a baby would we ever have the child in the donor's life and the answer would be no you wouldn't ever do that like if the husband was was not able to and so we thought you know that's the way that we would do it do the donors say they want to be contacted yeah they have the choice of saying yes or no so this particular one said no so Noah will be able to contact siblings um, that are actually born from the same donor. So he'll be able to contact them, but not the donor himself. Amazing. 
Yeah, it's, 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 yeah it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty crazy. And also because we hadn't seen any photos of him and everyone just says, oh, he looks like you, but because you don't see the other side, so you're not sure. So when, this, uh, when we eventually have a second one, that's when we'll be able to tell what's, who has the strong genes, I suppose. Um, and it's not fair for me to say what message would you have for the bigots because everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Yeah. And to, to call somebody um, who doesn't agree with what you're doing a bigot is wrong. Yeah, yeah, I know I would never do that. But um, what would you say to somebody who who genuinely believes that their views are right and, and yeah. there will be people um, and, and you're entitled to your view, that's fine also, particularly as you can understand it, having been mm. brought up in a particularly yes. religious way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think my message for people is just at the end of the day, if whether this rule was passed or not passed, what difference would it make to you in your everyday life? And the answer is absolutely none. Like if I was able to get married or not get married, does it affect you whatsoever? And if the answer is no, then just say, okay, you personally have that belief. However, why shouldn't someone else be able to do something if it, if it has absolutely no effect on you? And, and I think ultimately that's the thing. And then, you know, as my, my great aunt said, that it's not something that's her decision to make. And, you know, the fact is that that goes completely against her belief. She's 100 years old and she's still willing to, to overlook that and say, you know, I love you as a person. And ultimately that's, that's what I would say. If something doesn't affect you, then, you know, please let... Let someone else who's really whose life it does affect quite a lot let them live their life. Because the argument is that uh, a gay couple, um, that the argument for gay marriage is that a gay couple can offer so many children wanting um, adoptive parents yeah. a, a good home, but that's not what you did. No, it's not what we did, and, and we again, did talk that's your about choice. it. Yeah, we did talk about it for quite a while, and um, we we actually looked at it and we got all the paperwork and stuff, and ultimately we decided to do it this way, and um, you know for for a few different reasons. Um, and yeah, it's it's one of those decisions that we'll stand by, and I suppose also with my adva- you know <laughs> increasing age now that adoption is um is less likely. And I never thought I always thought I would have gone with adoption, honestly. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm glad with the way that things have turned out now. And also, you know, if it happens for your partner as well, you the both of you will have experienced that the uniqueness of yes. being a woman. Yes, I know, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward not to having to do that next time. Uh, but yeah, I think it gives you a different appreciation, and I think that once you've gone through it, it it completely changes your life, and um, it's just an experience and. It makes me feel weird, kind of strangely, um, well, I suppose not, normal is not the right word, um, but it's just an experience that so many women go through with childbirth. and It puts I'm, you into context as a woman yeah, somehow. Yeah, absolutely. It? And it, it, there's no differentiation between the fact that I you know, I have a female partner versus a male partner. There was absolutely no issue whatsoever with any of the appointments at the hospital. Was she there at the birth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, we had Giuseppe, the amazing midwife. Um, so they were just off chatting the whole Giuseppe. time. Giuseppe? Yeah. He's, he's left Guernsey now, but he was just amazing. And, you know, they, they, they spent the whole, literally the whole time chatting. And they're like, look at this photo of, of, you know, Giuseppe's friends. And I was like, can you just wait for this contraction to finish, please? Um, but, yeah, it's just uh, such a powerful experience. And, you know, the love that you have for this little creature is just something beyond anything that you would have ever imagined. Well, the love that we have for you this morning, telling this story and, and being so open about it is immense. I can't thank you enough. Oh, no, thank you. Liz, lovely to see you. And, uh, and please, can we contact you if, if we need any comments on, on yes. matters such yes, as this I'm on the, the I'm on the shortlist under G for gay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Thanks so very much, much for your time. And if you want to buy the calendar that Liz is so expertly photographed, GSPCA, Trim Dog. Uh, Critch Comforts, Godians, and then my website as well. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.